From County College of Morris, this is CCM All Access. Hello, and welcome to CCM All Access, the program that brings you news and information from the County College of Morris. Students on campus, members of the community, people doing good things. I'm Mitchell Etta, and joining us today is Professor Stephen Kaifa, who teaches economics here at CCM. Welcome, Professor Kaifa. Thank you so much. Thanks for the invitation. Glad to have I, you I on the show. I really appreciate this. So first up, what I have for you is, how come you chose to teach at CCM? It's a long story. I would make a real short. I was uh, at Montclair State University as a professor there. And we had a program and we invited uh, economists from around the state to that program. During the luncheon, I was sitting across the table from someone from CCM. Mm -hmm. He introduced himself to me, he said, I'm Dr. Terry West. I'm the dean of the business program at CCM. And we had a conversation. As the day went on, he said to me, would you like to teach part-time for us? We are looking for someone to teach part-time. I said, oh, give me your number. Uh, I will check back with you. Mm -hmm. So I did check back with him, call him. I didn't know where CCM was. I had never heard of this school. Mm -hmm. So he said, come up and come and see. So I came down here, saw the school, and he assigned me a course. He had to come and evaluate the class. So after the evaluation, sitting in my class, he said to me, I really enjoy the way you approach the class. We have a vacancy here about just one semester. Would you like to come here for one semester? And I said, no. Hmm. I already have a job. Why would I leave and come here for one semester? Yep. Someone had gone on sabbatical, and they wanted a replacement. And he thought I would be a good replacement. But I said, no, because I already had a job. But a year later, he called me. I forgot about him. He mm -hmm. called me and said, Steve, this is Terry West. Uh, you remember the position we talk about? I forgot what he was talking about. So he brought me up to speed. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah. He said, well, that position is not open. Hmm. Will you like to come and teach full time here? And I said, well, let me talk to my wife. She's the boss. Let's see what she thinks. Mm -hmm. And so he invited me up here. I came. He told me where to send my resume, uh, which I did. Something interesting happened. You wouldn't believe this. So I come for the interview. And the person who interviewed me said to me, you are very qualified for the job. However, we cannot hire you hmm. because you have an accent. Hmm. And our students here usually complain about professors who have accent. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry. So I said to him, his name was Howard Pearl. I said, Dr. Per, do your students work in international organizations? Do they travel? Mm -hmm. Do they go to other places? I said, that's beside the point. We are looking for a professor. Anyway, I left. Mm -hmm. On my way up to my car, I met this gentleman. He introduced himself to me again. He said, 
Do you remember me? I said, no. I said, I'm Kevin West. <laughs> How did the interview go? I said, it didn't go too well. It didn't matter because I was already employed. I had a full-time job. Yeah. I had a tender track position. Yep. He said, come with me. I didn't know what that meant, but I followed him. I went down to Henderson Hall. I didn't know what was, it was called Henderson Hall, but I went with him. And he said to this gentleman, this is our new professor for economics. Just said that. He had not hired me. We have not talked about anything. And he said, this is Dr. Law. He's our president. Hmm. And that's how I came here. Wow. So what? within a semester, I left my job and came here. There were some issues with salary. Mm -hmm. There were issues with uh, tenure track, but we resolved all that with the contract. Mm -hmm. So here I am. Wow, what a story. So did, it, did, it, did all that take a long time? Was, it, was that a long process, that whole thing? Or did it all kind of happen pretty quickly? It took, it took a semester. It took, it took a semester. Yeah. That's kind of how long it took. Yeah, it took a semester because I had to give those, my previous job, I had to time to look for someone to replace me. Yeah. And then I had to come here. So it took a semester. So next up, what I have for you is, which colleges did you attend, and how difficult was gaining the education you needed to get your degree slash degrees? Well, the first degree was at Cousinton at the time, it was called Cousinson College and Divinity School. It's now called Cousinson University. Hmm. I, I helped to change the name from a college to a university. Mm -hmm. But I went there for my bachelor. Uh, I only spent three and a half years there, so it was not that difficult at all. Uh, at least, I thought it was not that difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, then I went to University of Colorado in Boulder, Colorado. Mm -hmm. And I did a certificate program at a place called the Economic Institute at that school. After the program, I went to Oregon, University of Oregon in Eugene, Oregon. And I did a master's in economics. Interesting story. I was on my way to Liberia, where Cousinson is. Mm -hmm. I had a job with the government of Liberia to work in the finance department. There was a coup d'etat in Liberia where the president was overthrown, he was killed, his family, and many other people. So I couldn't go back. Mm -hmm. So I had to stay until they sort out the issue in Liberia. The government here was very nice to me. They let me stay, they gave me what permit. They did all the stuff they could do to accommodate me mm -hmm. while I was here. Well, I never went back because things did not improve there. Um, the soldiers took over the country. Uh, there was new government. I didn't know these people. Uh -huh. So I just stayed here because of the uh, military issues in, back home. Well, what do I do now? Now I'm here. Mm -hmm. So they say, well, you can work. So they gave me all the paperwork. And I was in Washington, D.C. in the hotel. So what do you do? Uh, I have friends who invited me to New Jersey, Newark. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the pastor of a church in Newark who I met a long time ago in Liberia. Yep. And so I came to him. And he showed me the rope, how to apply for a job. So my first job was, a, uh, it was called a market analyst 
for a recycling fund. Recycling was just becoming a big thing in the U.S. Yep. And I was hired to be the uh, analyst for this company. And so I was there. And then my clerk came up. It was my boss at the recycling plant, mm -hmm. the person we had gone out for his birthday. And he said, hey, Steve, a friend of mine at Mount Clare State is looking for a part-time professor. Would you be interested? Well, I never taught before. Mm -hmm. I said, um, no. And then he called me again, went back uh, to his office. He said, we really want someone. So go and try. So I went there. And look where I am now. Why there? This is interesting. Why teaching at Montclair, the, the lady who came to observe my class said to me, will you have to stay here full time? We're looking for someone and we like the way you teach. I didn't know I was a good, good teacher, mm -hmm. but they thought I was a good teacher. So there I was. I came back to uh, my boss. I said, hey, they want me to go there full time. What do you think? They said, man, who will do your work here? Well, it was good I went there because shortly thereafter, we had someone called Reagan. Reagan became president. <clears throat> and recycling was now a priority for his government. Yeah. So this fund I was working for went under. Hmm. But by then I was at Montclair, so it didn't matter. Yeah. So luck yeah. had me move. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you, or, you already had the Montclair job before the Montclair that went job. under. Yeah. Now, this, just, this question popped up in my head. You were saying how you uh, started teaching at Montclair and you were offered uh, the job, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Would you say that you are naturally gifted at teaching since you said that you didn't teach prior to Montclair? Yes, uh, I, I would say so because from my perspective, uh, I didn't know that I could do this because that, that was not what I was planning on doing. Mm -hmm. I was planning on working the government, uh, maybe even becoming president one day of Liberia. Mm -hmm. Those were my dreams. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I went in the classroom and people who observed me said, you are gifted. Use this gift since this is what you have. So I said, okay, uh, maybe this is what I should do with my life. Be uh, a professor, be a teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I have tried my best to be good at it. I'm still working on it, mm -hmm. but I'm trying my best to be the best I can. And not only has other professors told me I was good at it, my students sometimes comment mm -hmm. and say, oh, uh, Professor Kaifa or Dr. Kaifa, you are the best professor I've ever had uh, since I've been at CCM or wherever I was. It must be really nice to hear. Yeah, that. so it's nice to hear that I'm doing a relatively good job. Now, do they say that to other professor? I'm pretty sure they say so. Maybe. Other professors. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I take it with a green or so. You are good at it, but I try to work on it. Now I just say, oh, I'm good at it, then that's it. And always improve. Always It's always improving. better to improve. Yep. Uh, attend conferences, read, uh, see what other people are doing, mm -hmm. how are they doing it. Uh, is it better to do it this way? The good thing about uh, doing this is every semester, there's a new start. So if you didn't do it correctly this semester, there's always room to improve the next semester. The next semester. Mm -hmm. If this strategy didn't work, you try another one. And not all strategies work well. Yep. It also depends on the student body you have. Because when you get into a classroom, you have 20 detective students 
they all come from different backgrounds. Yep. They all come from different households. They all come from uh, different culture. So there could be a little bit of a learning barrier. Yes. So yeah. this strategy that worked last semester may fall flat this semester because yep. of the group that I'm working with. Mm -hmm. So I try first to know who's in my class, what some uh, some of their background, uh, where did they go to school, uh, are they foreigners, you know, from India, from China, Latin America, the U.S. Because they all bring different uh, cultural aspects in the classroom and learning style. Mm -hmm. The style in one country may be quite different than here. Mm -hmm. uh, here, we, we want them to apply. Mm -hmm. In some places, it's memorized, memorized. Right? So if I'm used to memorizing, then I come and say, apply this, oh my God, what do I do now? <laughs> it's all about learning. Yes, it's all about learning. So it's, it's a difficult job, but uh, you try to, it's like any other job, you try the best you can mm -hmm. to improve. All right. Now we are going to take a break. Stay oh. tuned and we'll be right back. Choosing a college is a big, big, big deal. But I know I started right, because CCM is in the top 2% of community colleges in the nation. And at County College of Morris, I get to choose over 100 programs. Whether you're just out of high school, like me, exploring career options, like me, or seeking lifelong learning, like me, make CCM your choice, like me. Go big and visit ccm.edu and aspire to be you. Welcome back to CCM All Access. I'm Mitchell Etta, and we're here with Professor Stephen Kaifa. Welcome back. Thank you again. So let's dive a little bit into economics itself. What is the difference between micro and macroeconomics? The main difference is the MA talks about big stuff, the whole economy, um, the aggregate. So in that course, we discuss uh, how the whole U.S. economy or a market economy in general, how does it function? Mm -hmm. uh, we look at big measurement, for example, the gross domestic product, unemployment, inflation. Look, the big thing you hear on the news, taxes, yep. income. Uh, the MI, we talk about small stuff, businesses, specific businesses. We talk about consumers. What is the role of the consumer in the economy? What is the role of businesses in the economy? We measure small stuff. Uh, so it's similar to biology, where you look at the whole human being, mm -hmm. and then you take it apart. So first we look at the whole system, mm -hmm. so that you get an understanding of how an economic system, there are many economic systems, but we merely talk about market or capitalism, how is it set up? How does it function? Who are the participants? And what role do they play? Mm -hmm. For example, what role does the federal government play in the economy? So we talk about fiscal policy, government spending and taxes. What role does the banking system play? The Federal Reserve Bank. You probably heard about interest rate going up. Why is it going up? What impact will it have on the economy as a whole? Well, when you learn this big picture, then we'll come down to the small picture. Mm -hmm. say, for example, what is demand? What is supply? Right? We'll break it down to small parts now. Yep. How is the market working? 
let's look at how uh, the demand for goods and services work. Let's look at who supplies those goods and services. Let's look at the market price. What are the incentives? Mm -hmm. and the people respond to incentives all the time. Uh, there's negative incentive, there's positive incentive. We we'll talk about cost benefit analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, the cost of being here, sitting here, is very costly. And you say, how? Well, I could be doing something else with this time. Mm -hmm. You could be doing something else with this time. Every time you make a decision, and you make hundreds of decisions every day, every decision has a price. I usually tell my student, remember this all your life. There's no such thing as a free lunch. It must be paid for. Mm -hmm. Resources are scarce. So economics is about scarcity and decision making. Hmm. Sometimes I make it very simple. I say economics is about mankind going about their ordinary business. Well, what does that mean, going about their ordinary business? Well, take for example you. You are here interviewing me. That's ordinary business. This is economics. Uh, the people who operate the machine, the machine was purchased by someone. Mm -hmm. It was purchased by taxpayers. Who owns CCM? I just said, tell them. The taxpayer of Morris County, mm -hmm. and to some extent, the taxpayer of New Jersey. Uh, so we are all in our economic system. We are consumers, we are workers, we are savers. Anything you can think of in your life has to do with economics. Mm -hmm. So it becomes easier to explain and understand the concept. Now, the concept can be difficult sometimes because we lose models, we lose math, and so forth and so on. But with, for a community college, it's easy to understand both the macro and the macro. Mm -hmm. I, I hope that helps. Yes, small yes. Small and big. Am mm -hmm. I big? Am I small? Yep. And that's a good point because that leads me into, into asking, uh, I read that community service is important to you and that it ties in with economics. Why and how is that? Well, everything we do is to benefit either where you live, where you work, or just human being. So, when I live in a community, I want that community to benefit from what I can contribute. Mm -hmm. Just not live there. I work here, I want to make sure the school also improves. Mm -hmm. So, I serve on committees, uh, I develop programs for the school, so that the school also grows. Mm -hmm. Where I live, I want to make sure that the scale and the education I have obtained spread out. Yep. It's like, I'll just give this example. It's education is like smoking. When you smoke, even though that's a bad thing to do, but the smoke spread out. Mm -hmm. When you are educated, let people know that people benefit from it. And so community service tie in, not because I'm an economist, just because I have an education mm -hmm. and I want society to benefit from what I have learned. So when I leave that community, they say, Kaifa was here and he helped do this. He helped do this. Not just live there, mm -hmm. but to help whether it's at work or at home. Okay, I get it. That was a great explanation. <clears throat> Thank you. And what I have next is, let's talk about some of your accomplishments. So you have earned yourself several awards throughout the years. Name a few of them, and were they related to being an author? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, 
when I was with the business department, I had developed several, I developed an e-commerce program for the business department, primarily because at the turn of the uh, century, going from 1999 to 2000, e-commerce became a big change in the economy. Mm -hmm. Schools were not often e-commerce. So my, my dean and I talk and my chair, and I said I would develop a program so that people who come to CCM can learn about this new form of business, that they brick and mortar. I also, so I was given an award for doing this. Mm -hmm. I developed, I, I had here on this campus an economic center. I developed a center. And the reason was students coming here did not take economic in high school. So I opened a center here so that social studies teachers in K through nine who come here, learn how to teach economics, go back to their school and teach the students so that when they come here, they already have had some course. Mm -hmm. I was given an award for developing that center. Then Coddington, the school that I attended for my bachelor, was destroyed during the Civil War, completely. Wow. When the Civil War was over, the president of that school and the vice president contacted me and asked me to help reopen the school. Hmm. So I formed an alumni association in this country and raised millions of dollars to reopen that school. Wow. So they gave me a war also. Yeah. And CCM, to their credit, CCM, the president of CCM, Dr. York, and the vice president, Dr. Cliff Wood, helped to reopen that school. Mm -hmm. They provided equipment, chairs, all kinds of stuff so that we could reopen that school. Mm -hmm. So if they reopened, and I took a leave of absence from here to go there and be a vice president to make sure the school run properly. Mm -hmm. So many of the awards I've, I've received are mainly due to community service, community service yep. not to publication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I, I brought up you, you being an author. I didn't really give any background information on that. It says, uh, I read online that you were an author and co-author of several economics yes. textbooks and study guides. What yeah. is, what's that about? Well, here at CCM there was a course, I hope we have the time, but we offer, I should ask, we offer macro and macro. There are students here who are not business students. And I wanted everyone to know how to know some economics. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a textbook called Elements of Economics to address the vacuum that existed. Yeah. So that course is for students in liberal arts. There were other schools offering similar courses. So a gentleman, a professor at San Diego State, I met him at a conference while talking. We decided to write one of those books together, which, which we are still using it here. Hmm. So P Professor Willis from San Diego and myself have this uh, book. Then I met a professor at Yale at a conference talking on similar issues. Here I co-author a macro book. Uh, so that's how you hear about it. So soon when you go to a conference, you meet someone and you guys have the same interest, say, let's exchange notes. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, it becomes a project. So that's how come I was able to write the books and co-author books. 
with other professors at other schools. That must have been, that must have taken a long time. It, it, it takes a long time, but here, here's the thing. If you have good notes from teaching, you just combine all those notes and start to edit them, and Into it becomes textbook. chapter one, mm -hmm. it becomes chapter two, and then your co-author does the same thing. Huh. Mm -hmm. Interesting. One of the things I did, which helped me, I had a lady in one of my math classes, and talking to her one time, she said, you know when I go home, what I do? I said, no. She said, I type all the notes. Then typing happened to study. So I said to her, could you give me a copy of it? <laughs> she said, yes. I said, yeah. So those notes became part of my notes to write the book because it was already typed. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it all kind of connects. It somehow. all kind of connects, yes. All right. It takes time, but hey, what else should I do? Because uh, as a professor, you want to grow personally, not just come and let you go home. You want to do stuff to improve yourself and improve the system. So that's, that has been my, 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 my motto, improve myself and improve the system and improve the lives of the students who are in my class. Mm -hmm. Make sure that when they come there, they are coming there to learn. And I wanted to understand that this thing we call economics requires critical thinking. And if they can do so, and you put a little effort, you can do well. Because if I can do it, I presume they can do it. Mm -hmm. And they can even do it much better than I can because they have all kinds of resources which I didn't have when I was in school. Mm -hmm. So I encourage them to use those resources. Use a laptop, use a cell phone. Whatever you have to help you improve, I want you to use it. Well, thank you. That was a great way to end the segment. <clears throat> this has been another edition of CCM All Access. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.